big win at home, okay? Big win at home. We have the back-to-back set up with Washington. We take care of business. We were in control of this basketball game. It was pretty simple. It was pretty clear. And player of the game, Landry Shamit. The guy was electric as hell tonight. He hit eight three-pointers and finished with 29 points. And without J.J. Redick, I was thinking to myself, how is this offense going to operate? Now we were adding Jimmy Butler back to the lineup. There's a lot of jumbling going on right now, but... Landry Shamit stepped in and just had a phenomenal game. He was feeling it. His stroke looked smooth. He was just wet all night. And it was really awesome to see the way the teammates interacted with him as he was feeling it, as he was getting hot. I was thinking to myself, imagine if we did not hit on Landry Shamit with where we did in the draft. Because not all players that get drafted in that spot, in that area, can generate some sort of game that early in their career. I mean, some of them sit on the bench. They barely play. They're four or five minutes a game. Landry Shamit stepped in. And without Markel Fultz, without Zaheer Smith, the way we are right now with our roster spots and our weak bench, if we didn't hit on Landry Shamit this uh, this offseason during the draft, we would have been really screwed. I know he still has things to, to work on, especially defensively, but He has shown a beautiful offensive side to his game, and we witnessed it tonight. Just absolutely outstanding. Some other great team stats. I thought this team played very well as a whole from the top of the roster all the way down to the bottom. Every single player recorded an assist. We finished with 39 assists. And when I say everyone, I'm talking even Amir Johnson, who slid in the game for, what, five minutes? And and Highsmith, the guy we picked up off the Delaware Blue Claws? He provided a, an assist and even hit a three bomb. How about that for stepping into your NBA game? This entire team was moving the ball well. We were shooting the ball from three beautifully. I think we finished with over 50%, 51.5%. And we drained 17 of 33 three-pointers. The team was clicking on all cylinders. In the third quarter alone, we outscored our opponent by 20 points. The, the, the Wizards actually started out hot, hitting everything. Five or six, we had to take timeouts early. I mean, I know it was within the first five five or so minutes of the basketball game, but they were coming out hot, they were smooth, and they're coming off of a, a big-time win, clearly without John Wall and just Bradley Beal, but they're coming off a big win against OKC, in OKC. But the Sixers get things going. Ben Simmons did he, did his thing. You see him getting more comfortable, taking taking more shots, especially in the post. We're seeing that. Joel and B, 20 and 10. And, and even when it was relaxation time for the starters, he was sitting in the stands and having little kids sit on his lap. And he talked to the media after and said, I want to be here. I want to be here for the rest of my career if I can. I love the way that this city embraces this team. And he loves the way that the, the fan base pushes him to be better every single day. And we love him. We love Joel and Bede. It's just beautiful. But like I said, when he was sitting back relaxing, and that's key, because this team took control, they did what they needed to, and the starters got some rest. When you look at our bench play today, you have TJ McConnell playing 23 minutes. Landry Shamit scoring his 29 points in 24 minutes. Mike Muscala and Jonah Bolden playing 18 minutes. And Shake getting 20 minutes. Get, getting rest for the starters, knowing we're going back to back, knowing we're traveling to Washington, D.C. to play the same team tomorrow night, that's huge. That's huge. You got to take advantage of those minutes. And that's exactly what we did today. Wilson Chandler did get in the game and the starting lineup instead of Jonah Bolden. And that's been, been a big hot topic of discussion. Do we want to keep Jonah Bolden in there, his athleticism, his ability to block, he's getting more comfortable, or do we want to go with Wilson Chandler, a more veteran guy? We go with Wilson today. So Jimmy Butler coming back in, he drops 20. And, you know, we hear the reports. He's yelling at coach. Woj tweeted it out there. And that's, you know, Woj is a very reliable NBA source. That's why everyone's thinking it really, I just, me personally, I don't know how serious it was. Is Brett Brown and Jimmy just putting on their face to the media to to, to try and save it all? I, I don't know. And until I see our starting five out there with J.J. Redick and Jimmy Butler, then I don't know how to assess this offense with Jimmy moving forward. The pick and rolls that he wants more of that we don't really run. The isolation plays. 
you know, until our starting five is put together and, and we have Ben out there with JJ, Jimmy Butler, Wilson, and Embiid, until I see them go out there and, and, and play consistent minutes, I won't know what Brett Brown has done since the talk with Jimmy Butler. Well, whatever. I, I mean, I, I really am not personally too worried about it at the moment. I think it was just two people trying to have a discussion about what to do moving forward. But I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I, I really don't care. What I care about is this team winning basketball games, and you can see them starting to get mojo. Of course, we all know the bench is still an issue, but tonight with J.J. out, Someone stepped up big time, and it was Landry Shaman. And he's never going to forget this night. It was beautiful. I wish he was able to drop 30, but he was coming off, you know, with the dribble handoffs, and he was knocking them. His, his body was angled. It was like a mini JJ. And I know, since they're both great shooters, that JJ Redick has him out there every single day in practice when they do practice and working on the, the craft that JJ Redick has and just you he, pretty much teaching Landry Shaman the ways. And you can see that today. Today as he was just outstanding and it can't go unnoticed how the team reacts this team is a family it reminds me of the Eagles locker room that they, they love each other there's something with the culture that Brett Brown creates and you can just see it the, how happy and be TJ Ben Furka how happy these players are for someone like Landry to succeed to the extent that he succeeded tonight it is truly remarkable now one thing I want to mention and you know, for all the positives tonight which there was it was a great team game we shot the ball well there there was a little bit that I, I don't like and and we hit 20 turnovers once again we had 39 assists so you can look at it and say it goes hand in hand. You're moving the ball around constantly over and over again. You're trying to move the ball around. Turnovers are going to come. That's the counter argument. And, and I mean, I guess you're right, but 20 turnovers is a lot, a lot. And it's just concerning for me because it, we are consistently close to 20 turnovers. And that is a lot. And as a squad, when it came to the free throw line, we did struggle a little bit. But, I mean, that doesn't take away from a dominating performance against a Wizards team. And, and I know, I know, no John Wall. But they have been playing somewhat decent together without John Wall. And Bradley Beal has been doing his thing. And, and we take care of business at home. We continue to be hot as hell at home. We continue to just have this mentality when we're in the Wells Fargo Center and it starts with the, the, the team play on the floor and you got to give credit to this fan base because we create a tough environment for other teams to come into our city in South Philadelphia and, and try and play basketball. I know that I, I was starting to think because I, I listen to sports radio all the time and clearly we are all Philadelphia Eagles right now and it makes sense. But it's coming now. It's starting to come to that time of year where, you know, football is starting to end. And I know there's still a couple weeks and all that, but you know, football is starting to, to go on the back stretch. And at some point here, we are going to be so sixered up. The first couple months of basketball, yeah, you get the flow. But it's going to start coming to a time now where we are insanely dissecting every little thing with the Sixers. And that bench is going to be a major issue. You know, I, I've heard reports that we were soon going to hear something about Markel Fultz. And I heard reports that Zaire Smith, you know, we're expecting him to come back and be able to create something this year. But it's been real quiet lately, and we haven't heard anything. And no offense to the, to the High Smiths and the Amir Johnsons and, you know, but... We got we to gotta realize that we, we need to address this need. Because as the season starts going here, the, the top five players, they create more minutes. And then those little amount of minutes that the bench guys get, they need to play their top elite game. Because they're going to have to hold uh, you know other teams accountable here in, in tight situations down the stretch of this back part of the season. I'm excited. I'm excited for where this team is going. You know, I, I talked about it a couple weeks ago and saying this team just isn't good enough. We beat the bad teams consistently, and that's the stretch we have right now. We have a, a stretch coming up of five, six, seven games or so against teams that are not phenomenal. Let's just be real. And and we got to take care of business here, and then we got to figure out and, and test ourselves against squads that we're going to be seeing 
down the stretch in the playoffs. Because as of right now, you know, we didn't make any moves yet. We're still sitting there with a good starting lineup without any bench. One positive out of this all is Ben Simmons has been aggressive, shooting the basketball more, taking more jump shots, being phenomenal in the post, and that's a great start. It's a phenomenal start. We got to continue that. We got to continue moving forward with that because that'll help the spacing on the floor. And then we got to find a way to add something to that bench. But tonight, Landry Shamit, he rings the bell. 29 points, eight three pointers. It's just remarkable. JJ sat out because of a, a back tightness, a back soreness. So hopefully that's nothing too serious. Probably isn't, or else we would have known way more about it. But Jimmy Butler gets back into, into the shape of things tonight, and he was making good cuts. He was scoring the basketball like he does, making some nice plays out there. So let's see what they do again tomorrow night against the same team. Hopefully they have a good mentality, not thinking, ah, we smoked them last night. This is going to be easy. They got to go in to Washington, D.C., have a good mindset. And just go out there and ball and, and perform on this back-to-back. -back. So we take game one. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Go Sixers. Landry Shamit. Outstanding performance.